Okay, welcome to Free Teacher in front of a tuk-tuk. In this lesson, we're going to look at Nazi rule. We're gonna look at the instruments of repression, the instruments of persuasion, and then how much opposition there was to Nazi rule. The Nazis used a carrot and stick, classic carrot and stick approach to enforcing their power and authority. They used fantastic, fantastic propaganda. Goebbels was a propaganda genius um, and used persuasion in many, many, many forms. At the same time that Goebbels was persuading, Himmler was persuading in a slightly different way using the Gestapo and the SS. The Nazis used the media, they used rallies, they used literature, they used radios, they used communication in all of its forms in order to persuade the German people that this was normal, this was what they wanted, the, the Nazi beliefs were the German people's beliefs. Most people being people, were passive and kind of went along. For those who wouldn't, there was the Gestapo, the secret police, there was the SS, there were concentration camps, and there was executions. The Nazis understood that control could be achieved through enjoyment, persuasion, positivity if you like. You persuade people to get on board. You offer the donkey a carrot. But they also carried a massive, massive stick. There was opposition to Nazi rule. It came from the left and from trade unions. It came from the right, from conservative quarters, and it came from the army at, at different times. It came from the church, and it came from young people. It has to be said that there wasn't a lot. There was more once the war started to go badly. But by the same token, it's difficult to assess the amount of opposition that there was. Because simply they didn't keep records, and the state didn't keep records. So, let's have a look at what, it, what opposition actually existed to Hitler. Check this out. Pastor Niemöller, he protested and got himself sent for years uh, to a concentration camp. The Catholic B Bishop Gallen of Munster protested against euthanasia and concentration camps and actually got euthanasia stopped in 1941. So there was some sort of protest. However, it was sporadic and not very well documented and it wasn't concentrated, effective opposition. 
this pretty much is the picture whether it's churches, whether it's youth, whether it's the left and trade unions, whether it's the right and the military. There was protest, there were attempts, but not that many. It wasn't a huge issue as far as we know for the Nazis. I mean, when the war was going badly, um, some German army officers tried to have Hitler killed. They, they set a bomb, they didn't kill him miraculously, and there were 5,000 executions that followed. So yes, there was opposition. Yes, Hitler was not universally popular. He came to power with about 60% of Germans not favouring the Nazis, but using propaganda, carrot and stick, by using informers and the Gestapo and the SS and every range of propaganda from the media through to music and culture, literature and sport. This ensured that opposition was kept to a bare minimum. Art is important. It's an important part of culture and it was something that the Nazis recognised that they, they had to control. Art, music, sport, everything, a total um, control of, of culture within, within Germany. That was what the Nazis um, aimed for and that's what they got. Total control of every aspect of people's lives. And, thank you. Sorry, I'm in the library and I've just disturbed some students uh, talking. Literature was used for Nazi propaganda and control purposes. Sport was used by the Nazis. An example of the Nazis using sport, of course, was the famous 1936 uh, Olympic Games that were held in Nazi Germany. Um, the German team did very well, but um, Jesse Owens, the black US sprinter, came away as the man of the tournament and kind of stuck a weed up the behind of Nazi racial theory of white superiority. Something like that. Okay, Hoffman. Another thing was uh, education. Remember, education was the bread and butter. That was how uh, the Nazis were going to indoctrinate uh, the, the youth. Hitler gave a lot of importance to the youth. Hold on, let's try and cross the road. Getting there. We're doing all right. We're not dead yet. We made it. Okay, so. Royal Palace. Uh, music. We've said that music was important. That's the main point. An example uh, needs to be given. You need to know an example that you can talk about. So, military music. Uh, the music of Wagner. Um, very important imperialist, very classical, not the degenerate music of the Weimar period, martial music if you like, traditional conservative military uh, music was used to promote German culture as superior. And of course in literature, Jewish books out leftist and communist books out. 
there was a um, book burning that was organised where non-suitable books were, were burnt. Um, the Nazis very much understood the importance of literature. Radios as well. Um, the People's Receiver was, um, it was very important for the Nazis to get radios out to the population. These radios could not accept, they would not pick up foreign broadcasts. So the German mind was constantly bombarded with messages from the, the, the radio and from loudspeakers that were put on street corners and in public places. It was constant and it was multifaceted. And of course the games that the young people were encouraged to play, especially at school, were often military. Unlike these days where kids blow people's heads off on Xbox. So, let's go through it one more time. Here it comes. Of course, trade unions were banned, so there was no real opposition going to come from amongst the workers. Newspapers were controlled, radio stations, all media outlets were controlled by the Nazis. They set up their own church, so even the belief systems of most of the Christian German population were influenced by Nazi ideology. It really, really was a comprehensive job done on that nation. Now for some key words.